This chapter will be a brief primer on the basics of analog mastering and vinyl production, for anyone who feels they might benefit from a little general background before I jump into the plugins themselves. Those who are active in the industry in the vinyl era will probably be familiar with much of this, but for people who came up in the digital era, it's worth going over a little background, especially with the recent resurgence of vinyl as a distribution medium. A niche market, certainly, but a healthy and growing one nonetheless. So, here goes. As most modern recordists know, mastering is the last stage of production, combining a final check of the finished mix level, balance, imaging, phase, etc. with an appropriate dose of subtle processing to enhance the presence and overall clarity of the mix. The processing done in mastering involves many of the same tools as mixing, most commonly EQ, compression, and limiting, but since it's being applied to the entire mix, any tweaks made at this final stage are inevitably more subtle. Typically, the mastering engineer will listen for the overall tonal balance and dynamics of the mix, referencing it to other commercial mixes in the genre, and if a track is part of an album or collection, to other mixes on the same album. EQ, and sometimes multiband compression, is often used to make small tonal adjustments, and single band or multiband compression is also utilized to achieve an appropriate dynamic character. For masters intended for digital distribution, a final brick wall limiter is employed to reduce transients, allowing for a hotter overall level. However, if an artist is planning to release product on actual vinyl, any limiting would probably be applied much more sparingly, both to conform to the limitations of that medium and also to preserve more of the natural, less compressed vibe expected from a vinyl pressing. At that point, when an actual vinyl release is planned, the mastered mix goes through several stages. Remember, the audio on a vinyl record is carried in the grooves on the disc as a spiral running from the outside to the inside of the disc. To encode stereo information, the groove has both lateral and vertical components, essentially width and depth, which represent the sum and difference signals of the two channels. The separate channels are restored in playback for normal stereo. You may have noticed that some older stereo processors intended for mastering, like the famous Fairchild 670 compressor, have an option to switch from regular left and right channel processing to lateral vertical processing. This was specifically to allow for independent processing of the center and sides of the stereo signal, which can offer benefits, especially when prepping for a vinyl release. The technical name for this is MS, or mid-side processing, and this option is included in the TG12345 plugin. We'll see it when I cover that plugin in the next couple of videos. To optimize the signal and provide for better dynamic range, low frequency response, and running time, Complementary EQ is employed. A frequency curve that tilts toward the high frequencies is applied before the groove is cut. The opposite curve is applied by your phono preamp in playback, resulting in a flat listening response. This EQ is known as the RIAA curve. That's why you must play back vinyl records through a proper phono preamp with the necessary RIAA playback EQ, not a regular line or aux input. There are no adjustments for this in the vinyl plugin because it's a universal and transparent process applied automatically, but it's good to be aware of it anyway. Then the actual vinyl duplication process begins. I'll pick up there in the next clip. <laughs> 